Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thursday on the road on the channel Strong Tour 2.0. We have the welcome and happy to have the Mr. Steven Spiegel from Kuru on the line, who I think is in warmer climates. I'm in Chicago today. Steven, where are you at, big guy? Uh, I'm in, I'm in uh, South Florida. So of course. How's it's, Tom Brady uh, doing? It doesn't matter where we are, though. We're always inside on, on, on in front of our computer screen. I, I could be in, uh, I don't know, I could be with IT Glue in uh, Vancouver right now. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a little, little warmer, but a little wetter, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, good. So, um, how, you know, how are things, right? It's been a little bit of time since you last talked, and, you know, just curious to see how, you know, how things are matriculating through, right? I mean, you're... You guys are primarily remote to begin with, right? So, I mean, you're kind of set up for all of this, I think. Well, I mean, we have we have two offices. We have an office in Brazil, and we 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 had an office in Florida. You know, everybody's everybody's working remote. You know, so it's um, uh, we are remote. I uh, we have all of our calls either internally or with our clients or with prospects that we're trying to make clients on zoom calls so it wasn't it wasn't so much of a change uh, you know we we have we use slack for communications and um so for us internally it wasn't it wasn't terrible with internal processes but as you know as you know george we're we're road warriors we're we're uh we're, we're at we're at conferences or at meetups once or twice every month and and that just disappeared overnight yeah 100 percent. there's no question about it i mean so you know you had i think i just saw online that you had an anniversary recently a company anniversary ah it was it was our linkedin anniversary it was um uh oscar oscar and i uh became linkedin and and oscar oscar's the cto for for um for crew who, uh, and we, you know, we've been on LinkedIn together for seven years. We, we've been, we've been partners, uh, you know, in crime together, uh, for that long, uh, as well. And, and in that picture was when we decided, uh, to focus on the MSP market solely. Um, and, uh, at, at that point, I, uh, the month before I walked, uh, IT nation, they call connect now. Um, I wasn't a sponsor. I was just an attendee and, and I, I talked to vendors. I talked to the people at ConnectWise. I talked to everybody. You know me. I talked to everybody. <laughs> so I talked That's to everybody good. and I, no, I, we understood, we understood that this was an amazing market. Um, and we, we knew, or we felt very passionate that we could passionately about that we could help. Um, and that's when we jumped in and we haven't looked back since. Oh, that's cool. So for people who don't know you, Stephen, why don't you go, yeah, take a little trip down memory lane, maybe give them a little bit of background, right? Where did you start professionally? I know, you know, that it's probably little known that you went to school in Philadelphia at Temple yeah. University, but, uh, -huh. uh how, why don't you, why, what happened after Temple? How did, well, you know, where did you go professionally? You know, let's just, you know, kind of get us from there till here. I had I had a wild ride. <laughs> I uh, I graduated Temple and I I went to work with my dad in in a textile uh, business in in New York City. Um, I uh, worked many jobs. I worked in operations in in we had a factory in the Bronx and and then I went and I joined the sales team and and uh, I worked sales and what we did is we manufactured. Uh, I don't know if a lot of the younger people know about these things, but we manufactured these things called neckties. We, we would put them on collared shirts uh, to make us look uh, pre presentable and professional. As, as you see, um, not really for me, but uh, at the time we sold hundreds of thousands. <laughs> hey, you know, neckties are still a thing. Don't, don't fool yourself. Yeah, we had, a, we had a showroom in the Empire State Building, so... Uh, pretty, pretty amazing experience. I lived in New York City. Love, I love cities. Uh, so I lived in Philadelphia. I lived in New York City. I spent some time in Boston. Um, and uh, then I went down to, uh, 
to Florida to retire, but, but uh, in between New York, <laughs> exactly. But in between, we, I, I spent uh, two years in Santiago, Chile, teaching English. Um, uh, uh, spent time traveling and taking a little time off uh, to do that. Um, when I got back to America, I went to uh, California uh, to follow the gold rush. It was, it was in the uh, late 90s, so it was the dot-com boom and bust. So um, I thought I would join a you know, dot-com you know, make it rich and, you know, retire again. Um, and uh, that, that, didn't, that didn't really work out. Um, so uh, I had this idea for this social media and, and messaging app, but uh, Zuckerberg beat me to the punch. So, uh, uh, but, but when, when I was out in Cal California, I saw this concept called Cold Stone Creamery, and uh, it was a, it's an ice cream store. It's an ice cream concept, and I figured, well, uh, they're not in Florida. So, and if, if I figured if I can't sell ice cream in Florida, then then, then I, there's something wrong. So, um, I I I bought uh, uh, the franchises, went to Florida, started building franchises in uh, South Florida. That's how I ended up here. Um, and we were growing really, really fast. And, you know, we, we uh, had between 100 and 200 employees and uh, it was, it was crazy. It was, there was, there was turnover problems. Management wasn't, you know, communicating with their employees. Um, uh, we were losing, you know, tens of thousands of dollars uh, every month because of high, high turnover, low engagement. It was, it's, you know, people, people at that time in that industry treated, you know, you know, frontline workers, uh, uh, the way sometimes help desk people are treated in the MSP industry and, 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 uh, you know, expected to do their work because that's your job. And, and we found that, you know, it's, it's hard. It's, I've, I've worked retail. I've worked in chink, chicken, think fingers, wings, and other things. I was, a, I was a cook. Uh, they have a place, they used to have a place in South street anyway. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I put in my time there and it's hard work. And, and what I saw is that they weren't being appreciated for the hard work they were doing. They would disengage and, and, uh, you would become average or, or bad, you bad or, or a company delivering bad customer service. And I knew there was a way, uh, to make that better. So I focused on that, uh, uh, with my own processes and, then I wanted to automate it, of course. So uh, I started to look for a product that I could buy to do that. I couldn't find one. So I started to work on one. Um, ultimately, that, that product became Kruhu. Uh, and ultimately, the, the market that I was in, which was retail or, 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 or quick service restaurant, didn't get the value um or didn't want to pay for it and all of a sudden some msps organically started to use our product and use it well and use it the way i thought it should be used uh i became friendly with them of course and uh we started to talk about why they're using it what's the pain and i'm like oh this is great this is this is this is a great and that's why i was in it nation trying to figure out you know if this was a a, a market i wanted to uh, jump into and I found out it was um, and that was we jumped in in 2016 so we're in you know we're in here uh, you know four or five years um, hunt, we have hundreds of MSPs using our our product and and what we what we try to do is try to help our customers have their team focus on the metrics that matter to help them deliver the customer, you know, amazing customer service, which we call their superpower, which will help them differentiate themselves from all the other uh, providers around there. And so, and so, that, so, so this is like Chick-fil-A, right? When I show up to the drive-in and they're always using my pleasure and they're always peppy and happy and my, my meal gets out super fast and you know, I rack up some Chick-fil-A points and I keep moving, right? That's funny. Uh, a cake and my, my wife and I were having a conversation about this just just yesterday. Chick Fil A, and we and we we started to go to Chick Fil A recently. By the way, with with lines out the door, and 
I, and this is little known. May, maybe in the in the restaurant industry it's known, but but uh, Chick Fil A is closed on Sundays uh, because because uh, of re religious reasons of, of the. Of what, which makes it very odd when they open up a location in like an NFL stadium, which is usually open on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, so I haven't, so they're closed, they're closed on the, in the stadiums on Sundays too, I take it, yeah. So, so, and we're talking about how good they are uh, compared to other, other concepts. And they're closed on Sunday. And we did Burger King, which was originally from uh, uh, Florida. Um, uh, they are open on Sunday, of course, and every day of the year. Um, same footprint, same amount of space, Chick-fil-A, amazing customer service, Burger King, Burger King. Um, Chick-fil-A averages 5 million per store, you know, and I don't know if this number is still the same, but Bur Burger King was averaging 1 million. Chick-fil-A closed on Sundays. <laughs> what's the, what's the difference? Well, what? well, it's it's interesting because while we've been on the road, you know, we did Channel Strong this tour back in August, and now we're doing it again here in October, and we've uh, hit several Chick Fil A's along the way, and it's great when you have everyone pre-order, right? And they're following your distance on the app between you and the store to figure out how long it's going to take you to show up. So by the yeah. time you show up, your food's ready to go. Uh huh. Uh, it's it's pretty cool how they they've simplified their tech to really make it easily consumable, right? Like you don't have to be a guru, right? To be able to get it done and get through. And I, for some reason, especially during COVID, they've really found a way to get cars through their properties fast, like super yeah. fast. You know, exactly. like to have people taking orders, right? As you're driving up and, you know, yeah, that way you're not getting bottlenecked at the, uh, at the board, right? So they've really, they've really got a science down to it, to be honest with you. Yeah, they're, they're efficient. They treat their employees well, um, and because of those two, because of the efficiency, they're profitable. Because they treat their employees well, they have lines around the corner uh, for their for their food. Um, they, do, they, they do. They do have really good chicken. <laughs> Let's try and they, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah they, they, I mean, they have a good product. Those are that's table stakes. So just like in the MSP business, you know, table stakes is you need to know what you're doing. Uh, and most MSPs know what they do, what what they're doing. I, I don't think the problem is is knowledge or or how to monitor a network or or how to keep a, a network safe. Um, but that's not it because because most MSPs, you know, they come in with with that technical knowledge. It's the it's it's how to build a team. Uh, you know, they're even really good at automating. But but how to build a team and and how to empower them uh to do stuff so you're well, that, not well, actually well let's yeah let's actually dig into that it's um it's a good topic so like morale inside the you know let, let's start with your company Stephen. right you're primarily you have two offices i'm sure you've done a lot of remote i mean but your people largely see each other on a regular basis like in a normal year right mm -hmm. so from a morale standpoint and this is kind of your background right you know the business that you built mm -hmm. like how do you like how have things been during this kind of unique year and what can what have you done to make things as as good as they could be right because i think it's challenging right you know i know the people that are used to working remotes one way but i just feel like there's a you know inner company you know jive that gets distorted somehow during all this stuff the, the first thing the first thing that we really focus hard on uh, is is transparency. Um, transparency builds trust. Um, when this first, I remember, I was I belonged to this organization called Entrepreneur Organization. I was with my forum in Colombia, and we were flying back uh, March first, and we were actually we had a we had a big conference that we were going to on the third. And as I was boarding the plane, I got a text, the first of many, by the way, that the conference was canceled. At that point, and, and that whole week, the stock market was going nuts. We, 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 were, you know, we were in free fall. At that point, I knew that, that we were in for a really unpredictable year. Um, at that point, I knew that 
that we needed to do something or we were going to be in trouble because all of our new business comes, and we're really good at it, but comes from going to the shows, uh, getting people to our booth, talking about our value proposition and getting them on board. That just overnight disappeared. So I could have just put my head in the sand and say, ah, no, we're, we're good. It'll, 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 it'll happen. It'll, you know, we'll, we'll get through it. I, I, first of all, I set up, I set up a management meeting. Um, and, and, uh, so we all got together for a day long meeting on strategy to see what we needed to do to pivot. But even before that, I got everybody in the company together and said, shit's hitting the fan. Um, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but I'll make you a couple of promises. I promise no one will be laid off because of this. Okay. Okay. Uh, number two, we are, we are going to continue to, to focus, no matter what happens, we're going to continue to focus on improving the processes. And, uh, and, and I also told them a story um, because I wasn't in, I wasn't, and I don't mean a story like a lie. I mean a story about an experience back in the day. I, uh, back in 2000, it was 2007, I believe, when the when we went through the housing crisis and and uh, everything. Hit yeah, the it started in 2007, but it really started the show everywhere in 2008. But yeah, I, we got you. Yeah. So I went through that, and and it was scary. And 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 I'm someone who who reacts really fast and go, oh God, everything's gonna turn out bad. We're gonna all, you know. I don't know what, what we're going to do. That's my first reaction. Second reaction is always, oh, it's just, we got this. Um, so I, it was scary for me back then, but we went through it. And at that time, I didn't have crew. At that time, it was, it was uh, I had a lot of employees. We had, we had our stores in uh, South Florida we, uh, with the Cold Stones. And, and we thought, you know, and, and we lost a lot of business. Uh, business went, went down a lot. We had, we, we had yogurt, we had the yogurt chops. That, remember those self-serve yogurt chops that were popping up everywhere? They were popping up everywhere. No one wanted to go out and spend money on, on ice cream. Um, we focused on processes. We focused on, on, on processes, on, on, on a lot of the things that we do in Kruhu on the software now. Um, and we just wanted to make everything better. We knew these were gonna be a couple of tough years but we knew that if we focused on this, we were gonna come out. So I kept investing in the business. Um, and after we came out of that, 2009, I, I, opened, another, uh, I opened another shop, we, we grew. Um, and, and by the way, we got a really good deal on rent and we got a really good deal on equipment. And, we were, and, and so, so some silver linings from, from that learning was, I was able to pay back that store within a year. Usually it takes five. Or so, so we were already making profit in the second year of doing business. So that's that, that's you know uh, that's one of the so. So there's always going to be uh, silver linings to uh, to any bad situation. But when we came out of it, and we had all of our processes in place, and we had all of these these uh, employee processes to to build morale and to retain people, our our turnover went from over a hundred percent, which is, which is pretty typical in, in QSR. I hope, I hope it's, you know, it's not like that in, in, in the MSP space, even, even if someone is losing a lot. Uh, we brought that down to 40%. Okay. A, a good growth rate in QSR is 3% growth per year. For the next five years, we grew 8%. And that was because we focused on the business during the downturns and we're doing the same thing now okay i just during during this downturn uh i just hired a product analyst uh right before this call uh i get, I, I had an interview and gave an offer to another account executive we're hiring we're hiring right now because we know if we hire we put the processes together we work on the things that that we need to work on and, and by the way we have to pivot because we don't have the shows, you know, we're not, we're not at the shows acquiring lots of leads like we did before. You're doing awesome stuff. You, you, you know, you, I love how you think out of the box, you're traveling around the country, you're, you, you have this going on. 
uh, we all need to get creative. And for those that get creative, they will come out more successful than they were before. And that's the silver lining. Okay, fair enough. And I appreciate the silver lining because, listen, I mean, maybe we get something good out of 2020 because it's the year that I'm sure will we'll be in the history books for a long, long time with movies and books written about it forever. But generally speaking, not everybody's best suited to, like, you know, there's a little, you know, I don't know whether it's the, the water cooler, the lunch, the after work beers, the, the outside barbecue. Like, generally speaking, there's like um, an ebb and a flow to every organization, right? And there's, you know, that inner camaraderie kind of connection that sometimes gets broken up when you're not next to someone, right? You're, you know, and you don't see them on a regular basis. And you're trying to, you know, kind of force the agenda, right? So how do you, you know, how do you convince your people to not be depressed during, you know, during this situation, right? How do you, how do you give them something to look forward to, if you would? Got it. And I, and I think, I, I, pro I, I think this is like a presidential debate. You asked me a question, I never answered. Um, I, you know, I, I, you know, so being, be, first of all, being, being honest with them all the time on, on bad news and good news. So they, so they, I think there's trust there um, that, that, they're getting uh, from me. Um, so knowing that they, they, they feel safe. So that's the first thing. That's like Maslow's hierarchy. Make, make, your, make your team feel, feel safe and secure. Um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to cut corners. I'm not getting rid of our CRM. I'm not uh, getting rid of uh, you know, the, the technology stack that we built. Um, uh, I'm, I'm keeping it in place. Um, you, you start to rip things out even if you say things to them, they're gonna think, you know, what, what's going on? Why are we, this gives, this provides value. Why are we, uh, why are we ripping this stuff out? Um, we, constant communication, we call it over communication. We actually have, I know, I know people that probably listen to your, your uh, video podcast, they probably use Teams, we use Slack, it's the same thing. Um, I think Slack's a little bit more mature, but Teams have come, they've come a long way. And I can't wait because I, you know, once they could do everything that Slack could do, I'll jump on on that too because all my customers use it. But we have a we have an over communication um, channel where we're always communicating news about what our customers are saying, about what happened on the sales call, what what new technology um, uh, we found that may be able to help uh, our platform. Um, we have we use Kruhu and Kruhu. So uh, we have an integration that works in MS Teams and Slack. And, and uh, so we're able to recognize one another for all the things that everybody's doing. Uh, and it's really important to consistently recognize uh, your guys um, and empower them to recognize one another because everybody has everybody else's back. In, in, in an MSP, you know, people lean on other people to help solve solve tickets some people have more knowledge in areas than others and and if you have this uh this culture of collaboration and teamwork they're going to help each other if it's one everybody for themselves they're not so so we have a way where we could easily give recognition we have a rhythm um so we meet every day at 8 30 uh, to start the day and it's it's across our uh, departments, you know, people from sales, account management, product development, um, you know, everybody's there talking about what they did today, what they're doing tomorrow, and what they're blocked on, what are they stuck on, and who can help them. And that we have a list, and off call, they, they get together, uh, they make time. They, we, everybody has some time where they can block out uh, to help somebody else uh, fix a problem and move forward. So, so we have that culture of uh, collaboration. We have the culture of celebration. We also have, and a, and a lot of MSPs, a lot of friends of mine that run MSPs or own MSPs also have this. They, they work with EOS. It's, that's very popular in the channel. So they have their level 10 meetings. So we have, we have a level 10 meeting uh, once a week uh, on Mondays. And we go over all of our numbers, all of our key numbers. And, and num I'm a numbers wonk, and, and which is another reason why I uh, created Kruhu. We could, you know, we could easily 
you know, gamify and keep everybody focused on the metrics that matter. And the metrics that matter, ultimately, it's retention of your customers, it's new sales, uh, but but that's th those are those are the results of the metrics that matter. The metrics that matter over here, it's you know how many account calls did you have, how many sales calls uh, did you have, uh, how many new metrics have we launched uh, uh, for for automation, uh, what new integrations are are on uh, the roadmap uh, to help. To help our customers. So, so what are so what so so that's interesting. What are the key metrics that MSPs then key in on? Like, what keeps them, you know, motivated to keep their staff? I, you know, you almost create like a little competitiveness, right? Like, what are what are the stats that they're paying attention to from your side? Well, they, well, CSAT percent is one. CSAT percent being customer satisfaction. That is a trailing indicator. So, if you're doing everything right, your CSAT percent should be should be good. Uh, how do you get there? Um, you get there from some leading indicators. What's your response time? What's your resolution time, right? How many times on average are people touching a ticket before they're closed? Um, you know, one of our, we just had a webinar with uh, Ace IT. They talked about, they, they like, uh, they've stale, how many tickets are stale? You know, they want, they want their guys touching a ticket every day, even if it's not resolved saying, Hey, we know it's there. We're working on it. We got you. So, and, and that all helps uh, customer satisfaction. Number, number of tickets that are closed, number of tickets that are closed should never be used alone because that's a, that's a quantity metric and, and you could close a lot of tickets without quality, but if you use that in conjunction with, with CSAT, uh, it works really well. Um, at net promoter score is really important. And, and uh, I just had a conversation with uh, 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 someone I've known for a while uh, that, that all of a sudden su you know, was surprised by a, a really large customer leaving. Um, CSAT was great, um, you know, but CSAT only tells part of the story. How many people are actually like how many tickets were actually closed? How many, how many uh, surveys did you actually get back? How many people in that company are you serving? And how many people actually gave you a survey? You could have a hundred percent CSAT, but you're still not looking at the entire issue. If you see that you have a hundred percent CSAT, but your resolution time isn't where you think it should be, there still may be a problem, right? So, so CSAT is important, very, very important, uh, and one of the most important metrics, but it should never be used alone. It's never enough. You need to also focus on those leading metrics. And if there's a, an issue, the best way to get someone to do what you want them to do, the best way to get your team focused on, in a non-threatening way, no stick, do it or else, that's not the best way, uh, is gamification. Like we're, we're going to have a contest. Let's make it fun. Let's say, let's, this is really important. And, and also. That's, that's, that's interesting. Let, let's talk about that for a second. So everybody has a different style, right? Every boss has a different style. Every management team has a different style. Every owner has a different style. Um, you know, and, and listen, there's books been written about this in every direction, right? Personality, the best way to communicate with your staff. You know, how to, how to pull out of them the information that, you know, they're not volunteering up front. So, you know, and then there's obviously the carrot and then the stick, right? You're saying the stick doesn't work from your view. Obviously, you've had a lot of businesses. You've been through it. But then the gamification, Stephen, I feel like just creating a contest alone may not be enough, right? How do you get your team to participate in the game? Oh, there, there's, there's a lot uh, you could do. For, first of all, you want to, you want to communicate it. You want to communicate the why. And, uh, you know, Simon Sinek would, talks about this a lot. Everybody nowadays in the workforce, doesn't matter if they're in sales or accountant management or product or support, they want to know the why. Why are you, why do you exist? 
right? Okay. And if, if, um, if you have competitors, what problem do you solve? Okay, your competitors solve that problem, but why would they pick you? Why would they pick us? Um, and actually, uh, when, I, when I hire somebody, um, the first thing I say, this is, this is an interview. This isn't my interview one way to you. This is our interview. You're interviewing me, I'm interviewing you, um, and we're gonna have to see if there's a fit. I'm gonna be the ultimate decision maker, <laughs> but, but I, want, I, I, I just had my last interview with this, with this guy. And I said, listen, I'm, gonna, I'm putting this all out. Putting this all out and telling you how it's gonna go. I'm being, a, no, no mystification. I'm telling you how it's gonna go and you need to decide if this is a fit for you. And this is your time to say, no, it's not. Uh, and so by that time, they know exactly what to expect. So when they come on, they understand. And then now we have a team that because of the transparency has trust um, and we keep the, we keep, we keep the channels open. Um, even in Slack, whenever someone DMs me, unless it's something really uh, private about family and they don't, you know, they don't, they just really don't want to share it. They don't feel comfortable. I want everything out in the open. If it has to do with sales, put in the sales channel. If they're having, if they're having a problem uh, with sales or they wanted to, uh, uh, you know, extend the, a promotion from one of the shows to this person, put it in sales so everybody hears it um, and everybody sees what's going on in your position so they understand. And I want them to know our purpose all the time. We also have, we have our goals. We have our long-term goals. We have our, you know, three-year goal. We have our one-year goal. We have the quarterly goals. Everybody in the organization knows it. Um, I go over it on the weekly meetings every week. Um, our capabilities. I want them to know we have, we have things we need to work at to be as good as we want to be. So we have five capabilities that we work towards and we're getting better at every quarter and everybody knows it. And everybody has quarterly goals called rocks. I'm sure everybody's familiar with that term. Everybody has rocks and they see how it's attached to the corporate goal. So they feel they're not just coming in and doing their one responsibility, their one task and leaving. They're, they're doing that, but they're doing other things that they know are helping the company grow. They're part of something. Um, and that's important. So going back to your question about the contests, um, they work, it's proven to work, but you're right. It needs to mean something. It doesn't, it, it can't just be something just for the sake of having a contest. You, you, you need to have purpose behind it. Give us an can you give us an example of, you know, a couple of successful ones that have been done either by you or somebody you're working with, you know, like what, what would you recommend for, a support team, a sales team, uh, a back office team, right? Like what's, what's, you know, maybe the top one or two ones that come to your mind? For, for support, we, the most popular use cases are, are, are support. Uh, but I'll give you, I'll give you some for sales as well. Um, so we, we, and we just had a webinar uh, on it. Um, I think it was at the Build It uh, conference where, where we had Ace IT and, and uh, the service manager was on talking about, uh, what was going on. And so, so we're, we're going from a, most MSPs were in office. Everybody was in office. It was the tap your back culture. Oh, God, how do you solve this one? I forgot, you know, um, maybe it's not documented um, and they need help. Right. And, and it's, so it's very easy to, to, to really understand what's, what's, uh, what's going on. But when, you went from having one office to now having 25 offices because everybody's remote. You don't have the same thing. So uh, we talked about stale tickets and, and what was going on, I think, is, is they were trying to uh, solve for that. They, didn't, they wanted every single ticket to be answered. They, they, they're, they're, they put this expectation of customer service, they put it here, and, and that was their goal for the quarter. And that's what they're driving towards, right? And you also don't want it to be uh, an entitlement culture. So you don't set it and forget it. So three years later, same thing. You take it away, hey, 
you're taking away that contest, right? These are, you, you, my recommendation always, and I tell I tell my my sales team, the account management team, when you when you're talking to your 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 uh, customers, you know, tell them that this isn't a black box that you put in your business and leave it, and that's it. It's not, not nothing is. You always have to put some some time into it uh, uh, to make it work. First of all, have someone managing it, have someone accountable for it. That's their rock. That's what they're going to do. And then for the next two quarters, focus on that metric that's important. Um, you know, we have a lot of our clients that use uh, our IT Glue score, right? So, you know, IT Glue is an awesome uh, software platform. Uh, they own a big piece of the market. But sometimes during the onboarding process, it's hard to get all of that information into IT Glue. So what they do is when they onboard IT Glue, they have the IT Glue documentation score. We have it in crew. They set contests and they make it fun and everybody gets really engaged about it. And uh, so that's that's something that they do. They uh, I believe in in I I believe in teamwork. I love I love. I love teams I, and I, I'm old enough to know that, that I shouldn't take credit uh, nor I, I couldn't take credit for everything that happens that's, that's great with my companies. It's always people that are working together uh, to make it happen. So, so we put together a, a thing for team contests where you could group people together uh, for a common goal. And it, it may be the whole help desk uh, position level ones and and, and do something like the stale uh, contest or, or, or do something, you know, I want the whole team together cumulatively. I want you guys to hit 200 tickets uh, this week. For the bigger MSPs, they break them up into pods, pods where there's five, five uh, people in a pod and there's a team leader um, and, and the team leaders have a contest and then the people in the pods have a contest. So, Team leaders get to talk trash and have a little bit of fun. And this is all fun, right? You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's never meant to be backbiting. It's meant to have, you know, it's just like me and you. It's like, you know, the Giants. But it's like, it's like, you like the Eagles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, I want to go there. <laughs> We're coming to Philadelphia in a couple of weeks. Don't worry. I'll remind you when it gets closer. Um, what's the, what's the coolest thing that results from this, right? Contest usually adds a winner at the end, right? Something is given away or, you know, they get something in return for, for hitting that metric or that goal or coming in first place. What's the coolest thing that you've seen given out on an internal team contest or competition? I, I saw this amazing story during COVID. Um, uh, and and, and we, 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 we don't have a contest, then, then you're a winner. We, we have contests and we have uh, recognition badges. Uh, and we have other other mechanisms where they collect points over time, and then, and then they could get something that's meaningful to them. And and uh, one of the things I gave a workshop must have been a couple of years ago, and and uh, it's one of the one of the pieces is personal, and you don't want to just have here you know do a contest. Here's a Starbucks coffee. Maybe you don't like coffee, right? So you're not even. And and then the I people are. I don't. Like, I don't like coffee. So, so, like, so yeah. say say you're working for a company and you're like, they don't even know what I like. They, they have, what's this? So, it's really important to really understand what your guys like. It, it, the most important thing is to make sure your team understands that that you care about them. So, having things in in the store that are important to them and and. Um, I was just, I, we were getting ready for a webinar and I was just going through LinkedIn and I saw this, I, I think it, it was, it was Trista, one of our, one of our customers. And, and uh, uh, I forgot who, I forgot her name. I'm sorry. Um, but, but she had an amazing story. Um, you know how everybody, you know, with, with my kid was going virtual. Actually, my kids just started going to uh, school now, but everybody's been, everybody was virtual in the beginning. Uh, at the end of the end of last year's school year, um, and it was hard for her kid to learn virtually. They didn't have a good good enough computer or a big enough screen, uh, and so they put a they put a, that that computer for her on the on the uh, store, and she was able to redeem 
uh, that computer for her, for her, I think it was her son. Uh, and it was just emotional. So, so maybe, maybe the coolest factor, not like Mountain Dew cool, but that was just, that was awesome. That was, that was touching. So that's interesting. Uh, so like, obviously in order to be like, you need to know the person there needs to be communication. Their, their boss probably kind of knew their situation, right. And, and help them get to that goal. So that's cool. You know, that helps people in the regular, the regular day to day. Um, anything else that comes to mind from a coolness factor? I mean, true. My friend, Adam, uh, from Excelnet, Adam Radulovic, um, uh, he, uh, he has a he has a kind of a cool culture in his <clears throat> in his company, um, and uh, he gifted everybody um, a case. I think a case of Monster. What is that? What, what is that energy? The energy. Like, so everybody, yeah. everybody loves energy drinks in his in his. You know, so so doing things like that. You know, he knows that everybody loves that stuff. He uh, you know sending those care packages to. Uh, uh, to their house, um, uh, it's you know it's you have to you have to know make everything personal, um, and and put that up you know if you if you use our system put it up in the store, um, and so so people feel like they're being heard. And every great company, out, you know, MSP or non MSP, every great company uh has this openness and communication and they want to hear feedback i mean that that's one of the reasons why uh one one of the most used module of ours is is customer feedback we want to hear feedback um and and we also uh want to not only hear feedback to make changes that's important that is important and we do that all the time we're always changing based on customer feedback but but we also want to hear the good stuff, right? Because if you get a, for every hundred surveys, maybe there's maybe there's three bad or one bad and two average. And and uh, what about the ninety seven great, right? And and you want to celebrate that with your team. And we have this uh, mantra within our organization that we we talk to to everybody about is celebrate the small wins daily, daily, and that really helps keep uh, everybody engaged. So, so let's, let's ask another thing. How often are you asking your team how they feel, right? I mean, I feel like it's a silly, you know, it seems like some people it could be a silly question, but trying to understand what everybody's individual situation, how often are you asking that question? How often is the team, you know, kind of aware of, you know, how everybody's individual situations work out. Mm -hmm. well, it, it, I mean, it comes up on, on the daily huddles. It comes up, um, you know, we're, we're always video. So I, I, I could see how people are, you know, you get to, I get to know my team where I know that maybe something's off on the weeklies uh, with the management. I, I, uh, they have to give me a word. Um, I, um, I, I, I meet with uh, the people on the sales team. Um, I ask them to give me a word at the end of the day. Um, so just that one word, you know, and, and, and we have, if, if, if there's a toxic culture, they're gonna start making up words, right? But if there's a good culture, they're gonna, you know, I need to hear something bad once in a while. If not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start questioning why. It's not, it's not so good. Uh, you know, we're in, we're in the pandemic and, and things are challenging. And ever since this happened, my job has been to try to figure out how to make it work in this different situation. How are we, how are we going to talk to our customers without, without the shows? How are we going to open up other, other channels? And, and since, we, since that fateful day when I was coming back home from Columbia, um, we had dozens of webinars. Not, not only with me as, as a, a panelist or a host, but we sponsored webinars, so we helped others. So our other vendors, our other friends, um, we, we talked to our customers about them because we know that they can give value to our customers and, and we're also helping them. So as a community of, of the vendors in the channel, I think we've come together more than, than we ever have um, 
and that that that's a silver lining uh, for me. We I uh, I started to work on um, online channels, which I've never done. Um, we we partnered with um, educational uh, uh, channels where where we were uh, promoting how to get your customers and yourselves on MS Teams so you could communicate better. Um, so we've been doing, we've been figuring it out and we're, I'm still figuring it out. I, I can't tell you that, oh, I'm there, I'm, I'm great. This is the pandemic thing, I got this figured out, I don't. And, and you're coming into next year and this is the time we're figuring out next year. This is gonna be the hardest budget that we have to put together because I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. Am I gonna? That's, that's definitely a hard one for everyone, I think. How, I mean, so let's pivot for a second to the people that you're talking to on a regular basis, right? Other IT managed services companies, IT providers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, what, what, are, what are you hearing about 2021, right? I mean, they're in the same boat that you're in, that I'm in, you know, they gotta start planning for next year. We don't know what the first, at least first part of the year is really gonna be like, right? So yeah. what's, the, what's the vibe out there? What are you hearing? Um, it's unpredictable, uh, but I am, for, for the most part, the MSPs that, that I, had, I, I don't have a customer that was strictly focused on, for example, the cruise ship industry or the restaurant or the hotel industry. I mean, they could be out there. And if they're out there, they're probably having a tough time, or at least they pivoted to, to, to another, another vertical. A, a lot of what I, and it's funny because because I'm, I'm my, my strategy as a company and what I believe in vertical verticalization is, is, is a good strategy for the most part, <laughs> take away the pandemic. Um, so if, if you, um, if you're an MSP, you know, law firms or medical offices, uh, for me, we focus on the MSP. We're focusing on making better integrations with ConnectWise or Autotask or Kaseya, working with IT Glue. You know, we're talking about with, with uh, doing something really cool with BVoIP and, and, and metrics for uh, for the call center uh, to get get people more engaged in sales. Um, so I, I I think it's 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 a good play when you try to be every everything to everyone. It, it starts to become harder. You start to have more competition. Um, you know, another example: Brightgage. If I, I go to Saster, it's a it's a conference for SaaS companies. You, you go into the exhibition hall, there are two rows of dashboard companies, but Brightgage focused on uh, ConnectWise, or no, they focus on the MSP industry, right? Really the only ones in the market. They did everything that the MSP needed, and guess what? ConnectWise bought them. It was, it was, it was amazing. So, so I believe in that. If you picked hotels, unfortunately, uh, or cruise ships, it, 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 was just, it was just luck of the draw. Uh, but for the most part, I do see MSPs in lots of different, lots of different areas. Um, I know that, that the, like Compass MSP, they do a lot of, a lot of law firms. Um, uh, and I, and there's a few other examples. Ace, Ace IT focuses on, you know, financial services. Um, I know, I know a lot focus on healthcare. Um, these are, these are places where, uh, especially healthcare, it's really, really important. They're in need of compliance. Um, uh, so, so for the most part, I, I, I feel like they're, um, I feel like they feel good um, from what I'm hearing. But I do, I feel that there is concern um, over their customer base. They don't want to lose their customers. People are more you know, some, and, and I don't think this is right, but there are some, there are some providers that are end customers, not the MSPs, but the MSPs customers, they're very, they're very, very focused on, on price. And, and, and uh, the good MSPs are saying, you know, we could, we could cut our services. Uh, and the ones that will lose their shirt is okay. Well, we'll, 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 reduce the seat price but that that I think would be that would would be bad um, for business at, at, at the end of the day uh, a lot of companies are still doing um, okay a lot of the verticals are still doing very okay 
MSPs, the only thing I'm hearing is that we are really, really busy. Our, our, our guys are really busy. And, and the things I hear over and over again, our guys are burnt out. Uh, our service is um, not where I, I want it to be. I need to, I need to work on that. And, and I'm concerned about losing um, either an employee or a customer. But I don't think in terms of business, in terms of getting new business, um, of course it's harder because they're not um, out, out, out in the market because a lot of times it's a face-to-face. -face. And, and I, um, you know what, also I heard project work is a little tougher. So people are looking for ways to generate uh, revenue, uh, for example, from the cloud. So cloud business is, is, uh, is really picking up steam. Uh, but I feel as a whole, I feel based on what I've heard, I, I, I feel bullish um, as, uh, and the ones that are investing in their business, I think uh, are gonna come out much better than they were when, when, when this whole thing started. That's, that's most of what you're saying is what we're hearing. I mean, we're obviously out on the road here, going to all these different cities, talking to people about their particular geographies and what are happening there. But yeah, I agree with you. I think generally speaking, people are doing okay. And I've heard a lot of people say that business is better than they thought. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this industry moves forward. I think we're positioned properly to help the rest of you know, the people across the globe to figure it out and move forward and pivot. And, uh, but it all comes down to the people though. As much as we're in the tech industry, Stephen, it's still a people business. And so that's part of what this whole conversation has been about, which is how do we keep morale up? How do we keep people engaged? How do we make sure people stay, you know, and, and, and stay, you know, connected to their, the, you know, their work and the people that they're working with? You know, it's yeah. a constantly uh, evolving balancing act, right? I mean, and it's not the same every day. And um, I don't know if emotional intelligence or EQ is the right terminology, but um, being connected to your people and understanding when you know they need a little bit of help or when they can help somebody else a little bit more, I think is you know part of the magic sauce to some degree. So you know trying to drive that within everybody's teams, I think, is super super valuable. So yeah. you know, for for whatever it's worth, I you know I hope people took away from this call that there's a, multiple ways to you know empower your people. There's multiple ways to get them to engage, and um, the kind if done properly, should give you better rewards than the stick. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, giving people the, the avenues to do that is important. Steven, where do people find you? How do they connect with you and your company? Is there anything that you can help them do? And how do they get to that? Well, they, they could go to our um, uh, website at crewhoo.com uh, to see more about what we do. Um, if, if, uh, if they're interested in learning more and they want to set up a discovery call to see if it makes sense, uh, we have an email, uh, badassmsp at crewwho.com. Because if you're, if you're looking into this, you either want to become badass or you already are, and you just want to keep on improving. Um, and uh, if you have a hashtag for your, um, uh, your event that yep. this is Chan Ch hashtag channel strong tour or hashtag channel strong. Okay. So, so if you just, uh, put down hashtag, uh, channel strong, um, we'll know you're from here and, uh, uh, we'll, we'll take care of you with, with the show promotion that we just ended. It, it, uh, it's expired, but, uh, for the people on this, uh, call, you could get up to three months free. It gives you it gives you time to, to see if it's a fit, but it also gives you a little bit of a of a discount uh, over the course uh, of the year. Um, cool. So, so that seems to have been resonating with uh, with a lot of the MSPs that we've been we've been onboarding lately. Awesome. Well, yeah. I really appreciate you for coming on board. For everyone that watched or anyone that's going to watch. This video is recorded. You can rewind, fast forward, replay. Uh, you'll see it online on Facebook, YouTube, and mspinitiative.com. Stephen, I hope to see you sometime soon. I don't know when, but we'll have to make up an event to get there. <laughs>
Yeah, there's a lot of MSPs down in down in Florida. You gotta you gotta come on down here. Oh yeah, tell, we, tell we, me we were there. We're, we were there in August, but we'll be back. Don't worry. Florida's okay. uh, Florida's a lot nicer during the winter time than Philadelphia. I'll give you that. Yeah, absolutely. But I miss Philly. I miss the. I miss Geno's. I what, what? Wait, what's the what's the cheesesteak that you have to? I, I, I'm a I'm a Tony Luke's guy, you know. But everybody has their cheesesteak stand. Tony Luke's. I actually like Jim's. Just, just, that's fine. Just don't buy cheesesteaks out on the road. Like we're in all these cities. I see cheesesteak on the menu. I can't do it. You know, it's not going to be good. All right. Well, I'll. I hope to see you in Philly soon. We'll get a Tony Luke's. There you go. Sounds good. Cheers, everyone. Talk soon. All right. Take care, George.